Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Real Brokerage fourth quarter earnings call. At this time, all participants have been placed on a listen-only mode, and we will open the floor for your questions and comments after the presentation. I will now turn the call over to Ravi Johnny, Vice President of Investor Relations and Financial Planning and Analysis at The Real Brokerage. Sir, the floor is yours. Thanks and good morning. Thank you for standing by and welcome to The Real Brokerage conference call and webcast for the fourth quarter and full year ended December 31st, 2023. We appreciate everyone for joining us today. With me on the call are Tamir Poleg, our Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Sharon Srivatsa, President, and Michelle Ressler, our Chief Financial Officer. This morning, Real published an earnings release, including results for the fourth quarter and full year ended December 31st, 2023. Real expects to file, in March 2024, audited consolidated financial statements and related notes for the period ended December 31st, 2023 and 2022, the related MD&A for the year ended December 31st, 2023, and its annual information form for the year ended December 31st, 2023, with the U.S. SEC and its annual report on Form 40F on EDGAR and with the Canadian Securities Regulators on CEDAR. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that statements made in this conference call that are not historical facts, including statements about future time periods, may be deemed to constitute forward-looking statements. Our actual results may differ materially from those forward-looking statements, and the risk factors that could cause these differences are detailed in our Canadian Continuous Disclosure Documents and SEC reports. Real disclaims any intent or obligation to update these forward-looking statements, except as expressly required by law. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Tamir Poling. Tamir, please proceed. Good morning, and thank you, Ravi. I will start with an overview of our strategy and some recent business highlights. Sharan will provide an update on actions we are taking to drive agent growth and improve agent experience, and Michelle will provide a more in-depth discussion of our financial results in the quarter. I'll then provide a few closing remarks before opening up the call for Q&A. To begin, Real is a real estate technology company that is differentiated in our industry. Unlike traditional real estate brokerage firms, we provide real estate agents with an unmatched combination of financial incentives, a proprietary software-based technology platform, which eliminates the need for physical office space, and a collaborative culture we believe is unique in our industry. Our vision is to simplify life's most complex transaction, that is, a purchase or sale of a home, by providing agents with the tools, technology, and resources they need to grow both their businesses and as individuals, all while delivering a seamless experience for home buyers and sellers. In the short term, this vision includes the rollout of our one real consumer facing mobile app, which streamlines the client experience and enhances attachment of our higher margin ancillary services. In the long term, we expect our platform to encompass a holistic ecosystem of financial technology products, payments, and investment planning tools, providing agents with an avenue to build generational wealth. Ultimately, as the platform matures, we believe home buyers and sellers could also benefit from the breadth of our service offering. Our goal is to redefine the role of real estate brokerage in the lives of our agents and in the broader housing industry. Importantly, just like our institutional investors, agents are owners of our business, and that is why everything we do is with the intent to grow long-term shareholder value. Turning to the quarter, this morning, we reported record fourth quarter results with revenue in the fourth quarter of 2023 increasing by 89% versus the prior year to 181 million, driven by an 82% increase in the number of transactions closed, combined with a 4% increase in average revenue per transaction. For the full year, revenue grew to a record 689 million, an increase of 81% versus 382 million in 2022, which compares favorably to the nearly 20% decline in existing home sales. We ended December with 13,650 agents, up 66% versus the prior year, and up 12% sequentially from the end of the third quarter of 2023. As Sharon will discuss, we're pleased that this momentum has continued and even accelerated so far in 2024. 
adjusted EBITDA in the fourth quarter of 2023 was $8.5 million, or $2.3 million excluding the impact of non-recurring balance sheet adjustments that was recorded in the quarter. This was a significant improvement from a negative $0.1 million of adjusted EBITDA in the fourth quarter of 2022 and marked our third straight quarter of positive adjusted EBITDA. The improvement versus the prior year reflects robust revenue and gross profit growth, which outpaced growth in our operating expenses and demonstrates the scalability of our platform, combined with the benefits of actions taken earlier in the year to improve margins and optimize discretionary spend. Full year 2023 adjusted EBITDA was $13.9 million or $7.6 million, excluding the balance sheet adjustment, a significant improvement from the negative $700,000 in the full year 2022. As we look ahead to 2024, there is a clear sense of excitement within Real about the housing market nascent recovery. This optimism is bolstered by the momentum we're seeing in our pipeline highlighted by both the surge in new agents joining our platform and the significant uptick in open transaction volume. That said, the rate environment remains volatile and warrants close monitoring. Nevertheless, although we are not providing explicit financial guidance for 2024 at this time, I am confident in our ability to deliver another year of significant revenue and adjusted EBITDA growth, regardless of how the end market recovers. Moreover, We remain enthusiastic about the outlook for our mortgage brokerage and title business lines. We expect both businesses to grow at a pace faster than our core brokerage business in 2024, aided by the rollout of the One Real Consumer Facing app, combined with growth initiatives we have undertaken to drive increased attachment of these high margin ancillary services. We also remain on track for the Q2 2024 launch of our first fintech product known as the Real Wallet a digital debit and credit card platform specifically designed for real agents. As a reminder, the real wallet will enable agents to consolidate all commission income, revenue share payments, and equity earned through real into one digital platform with the ability to access these funds through a real branded debit or credit card. Utilizing the real card will allow agents to accumulate points that can then be applied towards reducing their brokerage and transaction fees further enhancing the value proposition for agents who join our platform. This innovation highlights our dedication to improving the agent experience by providing unique tools and services that bolster their business operations and financial flexibility while positioning real squarely at the forefront of merging FinTech with real estate. With that, I'll turn it over to Sharon for an update on our growth initiatives. Thank you, Tamir. In the fourth quarter, our agent count rose to a record of 13,650 agents, up 66% versus the fourth quarter of 2022. I'm thrilled that this momentum has accelerated since the start of the year, and today, Real now supports 16,000 agents across the U.S. and Canada. This surge in growth has been in part fueled by our recently announced private label and pro teams programs. Initiatives designed to make it easier for independent brokerages and team leaders to align with Real while maintaining their unique brands and compensation structures. The private label program allows independent brokerages to leverage Real's technology and leading transaction management platform while maintaining their local brand identity, which often comes with a strong customer base and deep emotional attachment. This initiative has already proven to be a game changer for brokerages like Global Red, enabling them to join Real without losing the brand equity they've worked so hard to build. Similarly, our Pro Teams program offers unprecedented flexibility for team leaders to customize financial models for their individual team members, ensuring that the structure that has fueled their success at other firms can continue under the Real umbrella. This level of customization and support represents a significant advancement in how we support the growth and profitability of our agents and teams. These programs, along with our continuous focus on agent-centric benefits, such as access to healthcare, revenue sharing, and the Real Retirement Program, 
highlight our dedication to not just growing our agent count, but ensuring that each real agent has the support and resources that they need to succeed. We're often asked by investors, why do agents choose real? And it's clear there's no singular reason, but a combination that sets us apart. First, our approach starts with freedom and flexibility. Recognizing agents are entrepreneurs who know their clients and businesses best. We empower them with the tools and autonomy to operate as they see fit. Financially, Real stands out with an extremely compelling economic model. Our agents enjoy industry-leading commission splits, a low annual cap, revenue sharing, and equity opportunities, making Real a platform for significant wealth generation. Many agents who join Real find themselves retaining substantially more of their commission dollars when compared to other brokerages. The backbone of our advantage is our technology. Real is unique in the industry for our proprietary Reason software used daily by our agents. This not only enhances efficiency, but also ensures that we maintain full control over our operations and support services without relying on numerous disparate third-party systems. Culture is another important pillar of our identity. Our work hard, be kind philosophy fosters a culture of collaboration over competition. Maintaining this culture is a responsibility that we do not take lightly, and we will continue to nurture it in order to create a community that agents are so proud to be a part of. Lastly, Real represents a platform of opportunity. We are a forward-looking organization in a rapidly evolving industry where we are attracting agents who want to be at the forefront of change. The recent influx of top producers and teams from both cloud-based and traditional brokerages further validates our approach. As we look ahead, our focus remains on enhancing our offerings and continuing to build a community where our agents can thrive. I'm incredibly proud of what we've accomplished together and even more excited about the future. With that, I'll turn it over to Michelle. Thank you, Sharon, and thank you everyone for joining us. Before diving into our results for the fourth quarter, I want to highlight the remarkable year of performance across our business. We closed over 66,000 transactions in 2023, an increase of 78% from 2022, while the total value of transactions closed reached a new record of $25.9 billion, up 80% from 2022. These results would be impressive in any market, but are even more so when considering the nearly 20% decline in the existing home sales market in 2023. Full year 2023 revenue of 689 million increased 81% from 382 million in 2022, while gross profit of 63 million grew even faster, up 97% compared to 32 million in 2022. Importantly, growth in gross profit outpaced growth in our cash operating expenses, and resulted in our first ever full year of positive annual adjusted EBITDA, which was $13.9 million for the full year 2023 and $7.6 million for the full year 2023, excluding the impact of a $6.2 million non-recurring balance sheet adjustment related to stock-based compensation expenses recorded within cost of goods sold. This marked a significant increase from the negative 700,000 adjusted EBITDA in 2022. For the full year, we generated 19.9 million of cash flow from operations and allocated 2.9 million to share repurchases, including 1.1 million in the fourth quarter of 2023. As Tamir mentioned in his remarks, we're not providing formal guidance for 2024 at this time. However, given the strong growth in agent count throughout 2023 and thus far in 2024, we do expect to deliver continued year-over-year -year improvement in revenue, gross profit, and adjusted EBITDA in 2024. Moving on to the quarter. Revenue in the fourth quarter of 2023 rose to 181 million an increase of 89% versus the fourth quarter of 2022. Growth was driven by an 89% increase in commission revenue, 
which benefited from an 82% increase in transaction close and reached approximately 17,760 in the quarter, combined with a 4% increase in brokerage revenue per transaction. Recall our primary economic unit is an individual transaction, as we recognize revenue at the time the transaction closes. Title and mortgage revenue totaled 900,000 in the fourth quarter of 2023, an increase of 86% versus the fourth quarter of 2022. Given we closed on the acquisition of One Real Mortgage in December 2022, the prior year fourth quarter only reflected a partial contribution from the acquisition. Gross profit in the fourth quarter of 2023 was 15.5 million, up 89% from 8.2 million in the fourth quarter of 2022. Gross margin of 8.6% was approximately flat in the fourth quarter of 2023 relative to the prior year, and down slightly sequentially from 8.7% in the third quarter of 2023. As a reminder, our cost of goods sold includes stock-based compensation related to our agent stock purchase program. This program allows agents to receive a portion of their commissions in the form of real equity, subject to certain vesting requirements. This amount is excluded from adjusted EBITDA in the stock-based compensation line. While we had anticipated a modest sequential improvement in gross margin relative to the third quarter of 2023, we saw some margin pressure in the fourth quarter, primarily from revenue mix. As commission revenue was much stronger than expected, a high cost problem, while revenue from our higher margin ancillary services lines was lower. For the full year 2023, gross margin was 9.1%, an increase of 75 basis points versus 2022 reflecting both the benefit of actions taken to increase margins and a higher contribution from our ancillary business lines. While quarterly growth margins can fluctuate based on mix and natural seasonality in our business, we remain focused on continually driving year-over-year growth margin improvement, particularly as our higher margin ancillary business lines continue to scale. Total operating expenses, which include general and administrative, marketing and R&D, or 26.8 million, or 14.8% of revenue in the fourth quarter of 2023. This reflects a roughly 100 basis point improvement from the fourth quarter of 2022. Notably, operating expenses this quarter include a 5.1 million out of period adjustment in stock-based compensation expense that was recorded in the fourth quarter. Excluding this catch up, Total operating expenses as a percent of revenue would have improved by approximately 400 basis points year over year, demonstrating the operating leverage in our platform. Revenue share expense was 6.8 million in the fourth quarter of 2023, up from 4 million in the prior year period, and improved as a percentage of sales to 3.8%, down 40 basis points from 4.2% in the prior year period. This cost is entirely variable and reflects real commission shares paid to agents for recruiting new agents to the brokerage. Revenue share is categorized as a marketing expense as our sponsorship structure aids in attracting and retaining new agents while also enhancing productivity across our platform. Adjusted operating expense, which reflects total operating expenses, less revenue share, stock-based compensation, depreciation, and other unique or non-cash items totaled 11.2 million in the fourth quarter of 2023, or 6.2% of revenue, a roughly 180 basis point improvement from 8% in the prior year, further illustrating the scalability of our business model. Adjusted operating expense is a metric provided in our press release to help investors better understand the composition of our non-variable ongoing fixed cash operating expenses. Real's net loss was 12 million in the fourth quarter of 2023, compared to a loss of 6.8 million in the fourth quarter of 2022. Adjusted EBITDA was 8.5 million in the quarter. However, this amount reflects the non-recurring balance sheet adjustment described earlier. Excluding the impact of this adjustment, adjusted EBITDA improved to 2.3 million in the fourth quarter of 2023, a significant improvement from the negative 100,000 in the fourth quarter of 2022. The increase was driven by higher revenue and gross profit, which outpaced growth in our cash operating expenses. Turning to our balance sheet and cash flow, we ended the year with unrestricted cash and investments of approximately 29 million, 
an increase of $10.2 million from the end of 2022. Our cash balance consists of $14.7 million of unrestricted cash and $14.2 million in short-term investments. We remain well capitalized and believe we have ample liquidity to fund our continued growth while continuing to return capital to shareholders. We will remain opportunistic with respect to M&A with a focus on maximizing long-term shareholder value. To close, I'll recap a few KPIs we are commonly asked about. The total value of homes transacted over our platform increased to 6.8 billion in the fourth quarter of 2023, a 92% year-over-year increase. The median sale price of properties sold by our agents was 355,000 in the fourth quarter of 2023, which represents a 2% increase compared to the fourth quarter of 2022. Total operating expense per transaction, excluding revenue share, was 1,124 in the fourth quarter of 2023, a 2% 2 year-over-year improvement. However, adjusted operating expense per transaction of 632 in the fourth quarter of 2023 improved by 20% compared to the fourth quarter of 2022, a testament to the efficiencies enabled by our technology platform. As of the end of the fourth quarter of 2023, 10% of agents had exceeded their annual commission cap, up from 9% during the fourth quarter of 2022. This cohort represented approximately 43% of commission revenue during the quarter. Canada accounted for 18% of commission revenue in the fourth quarter of 2023, compared to 14% in the fourth quarter of 2022. Our headcount efficiency ratio, which we define as full-time employees excluding real title and one real mortgage employees, divided by the number of agents that are on our platform was one to 116 at the end of the fourth quarter. This compares to one to 98 at the end of the fourth quarter of 2022. This concludes my financial remarks. More details on our results and key operating metrics can be found in the earnings press release and investor presentation that accompanied this call. I will now turn it back to Tamir. Thank you, Michelle. Reflecting on the entirety of 2023, it's clear that Real has not only navigated, but excelled in what has been an extremely challenging market environment, one in which the market for existing home sales declined by nearly 20%. Our success is a powerful endorsement of our differentiated business model, the unparalleled value we offer to our agents, the cutting edge technology that underpins our operations, and most importantly, the collaborative culture we've nurtured since our inception. These pillars have not only sustained us, but have propelled us forward, even when the industry at large faces headwinds. Before going to Q&A, I want to take a moment to talk about our proprietary software-based technology platform known as Reason. Now, technology is a common buzzword in our industry, but I believe what distinguishes Reason from other platforms is its universal adoption across our agent base. Unlike other brokerages where maybe 10% or 20% of agents use the in-house technology offering, at Real, every agent leverages Reason. This 100% utilization rate reflects our philosophy that technology should be integral to a brokerage, not optional. The power of reason lies in its ability to leverage software to automate what are traditionally human intensive processes on the back end of a real estate transaction, enabling us to close a transaction in minutes, something that could take hours, if not days, at traditional brokerages. This automation allows agents to spend less time on paperwork and administrative tasks and more time on what they do best, selling real estate. Meanwhile, the benefits to real are evident in the fact that our transaction processing team headcount has remained flat at just nine employees for the past two years, while our annual transaction count has effectively quadrupled from 17,000 in 2021 to over 66,000 in 2023. Importantly, Reason isn't just a transaction management tool. It's a comprehensive real estate agent operating system, a hub for accessing marketing tools, training materials, collaborating with other agents, as well as managing day-to-day -day brokerage operations. With the real wallet on the horizon, Reason will evolve even further into a wealth-building fintech platform, something that is truly unprecedented in the real estate space. With all of our transaction data, 
housed on one single system, our in-house AI assistant, Leo, becomes smarter with every transaction, anticipating steps that must be taken, recommending appropriate actions, and extracting the key data insight to help agents run their businesses more efficiently. With Leo, we believe really is one of, if not the only major real estate brokerage utilizing AI to improve transaction efficiencies, and we are still just scratching the surface of its potential. With that, I want to express my deepest gratitude to our agents, employees, and industry partners who have supported Real both in 2023 and throughout our journey. Your unwavering commitment and belief in our vision have been instrumental and continue to be the cornerstone of our success. Now, let's move to the Q&A session. Certainly. Everyone at this time will be conducting a question and answer session for analysts. If you have a question or comment, please press star 1 on your phone at this time. We do ask that while posing your question, please pick up your handset if you're listening on speakerphone to provide optimum sound quality. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please press star 1 on your phone. Your first question is coming from Darren Aftahi from Roth MKM. Your line is live. Uh, hi, guys. Good morning. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, nice job on the Results, uh, Tamir, I think you mentioned um, in your prepared remarks a uh, comment about acceleration of agents into 24. I'm, I'm curious if you could kind of dovetail those comments uh, next to the, the launch of pro teams and, and private label and, and how much of an impact um, that initiative is kind of having on that, that acceleration. Hi, Darren. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have felt an acceleration uh, since the beginning of the year. So we added more than a thousand agents in uh, in January, more than a thousand agents in February. Um, we expect onboarding more than a thousand agents in March, and we have about two thousand agents who signed ICAs but have not onboarded yet. So we have a strong pipeline of agents waiting to join. I think that uh, the pro teams and private label discussions um, are probably still not fully reflected in the growth yet. So those are discussions that we started uh, towards the uh, the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024. Those are large teams and independent brokerages that do not make the switch overnight. We do have a very strong pipeline of uh, of candidates of pro teams and uh, private labels that are looking to join in the next few months. So I think that despite of the fact that that growth has been extremely strong, um, it might be even stronger when the full effect of pro teams and private label kicks in over the next few weeks. Great. Um, another one, if I may, uh, could you maybe list out your top two or three strategic priorities uh, for the team uh, in, in 2004? Maybe not financial per se, but um, just strategic priority. Sure. Um, I would say three main things. One, continuing to uh, – four. One, continuing to improve efficiency. This has been a focus uh, of the company since we, we actually started. Um, our ability to process transactions um, very efficiently, quickly, and without any human labor involved um, is key for us, and we continue to to uh, evolve and uh, and improve on that. Second, obviously growth. Um, we expect to, to bring an, a large number of agents on board this year, and that puts a lot of pressure on our onboarding team and, uh, and overall operation and support team. Uh, the third, the real wallet. There's a lot of excitement internally around the wallet and, and how the wallet can evolve. So obviously we are starting alpha testing within a couple of weeks with a small uh, group of agents, and then we will roll it out to the entire agent population. So that's a huge focus for the company. And obviously the consumer-facing app, the one real app, uh, which now we are building the building blocks in the background. We're also um, kind of back to the drawing board when it comes to the user interface um, and just planning the additional uh, steps and evolution of the one we app. So all of those four would be the main focus for 2024. Great. If I could just sneak one last one in. Um, your, your comments about Reason, I'm curious, um, would you ever license out that technology or is that something you'd want to keep in-house? This is something that we would want to keep in-house. Um, this is a huge competitive advantage that, that we have built and continue to build. I think that if you think about potential M&As, if in the past, um, you had seen brokerages acquiring tech companies in order to maybe integrate their 
technology within their operation, I think that with reason, we can actually flip that picture. So as a tech company that has built a very robust operating system for a brokerage and operating system for agent businesses that can, can instill uh, efficiency both in our operation and in the agent's operation and also monetize transactions in a better way, I think that that allows us to leverage that technology in order to potentially acquire transactions. And when I say acquire transactions, uh, transactions I mean uh, acquiring other brokerages in order to, uh, to leverage their transactions and, uh, and leverage our technology in their operation. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question is coming from Stephen Sheldon from William Blair. Your line is live. Hey, thanks uh, for taking my questions and great job all around here. Um, first one, just generally wanted to ask how much visibility you have into the agent recruiting pipeline and, and how do you monitor or track the recruiting efforts of your existing team, agents and teams, I guess, to bring others to real. It sounds like you have maybe some more visibility given some of these new initiatives that are bringing over bigger teams, but do you also get visibility into you know, smaller smaller maybe agent teams that are working to add an agent or two? We just love any detail on the visibility you get. Sure. Thanks, Stephen. Um, so yeah, as you distinguish between large teams and, and maybe solo agents, and, uh, solo agents or small teams, um, this is probably the same for us. We don't have a CRM that, uh, that organizes the, the data from all of the agents. Uh, I think that at this point, growth, especially when we're talking about solo agents, is pretty predictable for us just because we can look at patterns, we can look at seasonality, we can uh, quite accurately um, estimate what would be the number of solo agents or small teams that will be joining us. I think that uh, what we're seeing is that more and more large teams are joining and independent brokerages. So, for example, last year, uh, a team or a brokerage of 100, 150 agents would be a large uh, team for us to onboard. Right now, we're talking to teams and brokerages of four, five, six, seven hundred 700 agents. Um, so, obviously, in those discussions, we're very active. Um, we, we track the pipeline, but I think that, again, on the solo agents, it's pretty predictable without us having any visibility into what's happening on the large teams and, and independent brokerages, we do have full visibility. Got it. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, as a follow-up, just curious how the, the one real consumer app build-out is going relative to what you would have expected. When do you think it could start to have an impact on attach rates for uh, ancillary solutions like mortgage and, and down the road, but eventually title. What, what, I, what are some of the important milestones that we should be thinking about? Sure. Um, so obviously we're putting a lot of focus on the one real app. Uh, the challenge there is that nobody has tried it before. So we are doing everything from scratch. We're designing everything from, from scratch. We're building all of the internal building blocks, all of the integration between title, mortgage, and brokerage. Uh, those t things take time. I think that on the back end, um, we're doing good progress. On the front end, which is the user interface, um, we have not released a new version of the app just because, as I said before, we are somewhat back to the drawing board and trying to design the additional um, building blocks of, of the consumer or the, the user interface. So home search, collab collaboration with the agent, uh, paperwork, um, all of those things. Um, I expect that process to complete in about eight weeks, I would say. Um, I think we will see more progress on the one we lap in the second half of the year. When it comes to attaching ancillary services, um, this year both title and mortgage will grow, will, their growth will outpace the growth of, of brokerage. So I expect those two companies to grow at a minimum of 200% year over year. I can tell you that mortgage um, has had best month ever in, in February. So this is a good sign. Um, February is typically a very slow month for, uh, for real estate. So we are seeing uh, attach rates um, going in a, in a very positive and promising uh, direction. On top of that, we have some of our biggest teams already commit, committing to using real title. So we will probably see the effect of that starting in Q2 and then for the remainder of the year. But as I, as we said before, we are very bullish on those two businesses, and I think that uh, 2024 
um, their impact on our financials will become much more significant. Great to hear. Uh, appreciate the detail. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Your next question is coming from Matthew Erdner from Jones Trading. Your line is live. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking the questions. Uh, could you talk about the commission splits that you guys are seeing with your agents and how the recent suits have had kind of an effect on those operations? Uh, hi, Matt. Thanks. Um, it's interesting because we, we've been trying to monitor and, and look at some patterns uh, in the market. Um, I can say that we have not seen any change uh, thus far. So we, we actually have seen a little bit of, of a decline in commission rates in Canada, which was surprising because it has nothing to do with the anti antitrust uh, lawsuit. But in the U.S., it's for our agents, business as usual when it comes to commission rates. So we're not, we're not seeing that pressure. Uh, also, reports from our agents suggest that they're not feeling that pressure from their clients. Uh, maybe yet, maybe uh, it wouldn't come at all, but it's still not um, being felt in, in the business or by the agents. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. And then turn into the real wallet. Uh, when do you expect this to kind of be fully scaled? Um, what impact is this going to have on your guys' margins overall as a whole? And then could you talk a little bit about the banking partners behind it? Could you repeat the first half of the question, please? Um, when do you expect the real wallet to kind of be fully scaled up, adoption rate? Um, you know, what's the impact on the margins going to be, you know, when you do get it fully scaled? Um, and then the banking partners as well. Sure. Um, so the banking partner, the, the banking as a service partner we work with is a company called Unit. They have uh, banks that they work with. Um, which are kind of behind the scenes. Um, we are going to go somewhat slow with the wallet. As I said, we're starting alpha testing within a couple of weeks, and then we will roll it out um, to more and more agents. The question is not how many agents will use it, it's how much credit do we feel comfortable giving to our agents. So at the beginning, we will be ultra conservative with our underwriting, and then as we get more and more experience with the wallet uh, and, you know, patterns around that, we, we can offer more credit to the agent. So I think that um, probably that it will evolve over time. I think that 2024 is going to be somewhat of a test year for, for the wallet, even though it will have a positive effect on our financials uh, in 2024. Um, long term, I think that it's a little bit early to, to predict because the wallet can evolve in so many different directions and it can go even into into the consumer realm as well. So offering wallet related products to our agents clients. Um, I think that on a gross margin basis, the wallet can have an impact of one to 2% um, in, in total gross margin. Yeah, that, that's good to note. And then as a follow up to that, you know, as you kind of get this thing off the ground? Are there any front-loaded expenses that you guys are expecting to incur or, you know, just expenses going forward that we should kind of put into the model for the wallet? Um, the only expenses right now are dev-related. And, I mean, it's part of, of our dev budget. We have we started working on it in, in 2023. We'll continue to work on it in 2024. Uh, I don't think there, there are any outstanding or extraordinary expenses related to the wallet um, that, that you should uh, factor in in a model. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question is coming from Soham Bonzel from BTIG. Your line is live. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, Tamir, I guess just stepping back for a second, you know, uh, historically the, the brokerage business has been called – you know, high single digit, sort of 10% EBITDA margin business. Now, obviously, your margin profile is going to be a little different given your business model. But, you know, as you sort of put together some of the innovative things that you're doing on the fintech side and then just the mortgage and title and salary attach, you know, how should we think about sort of normalized margins, right, in, in, in normal market, right, call it 5 million existing home sales long term? Um. I think that if you factor in the wallet, 
uh, title mortgage and some additional services that we will be adding later on. We're looking at gross margins in the mid-teens, um, which I think we, we will get to within a couple of years. Um, and uh, EBITDA margins of you know, high single digit, I would say. Uh, that's our target. Got it. Okay. And the second one, you know, you talked a lot about sort of productivity on the operations side, which I think is certainly unique. But, you know, I wanted to ask you about sort of levers that you have to pull to improve productivity on the agent side, right? Because I think we can all debate what happens to agent count long term. But as long as you can sort of keep, you know, keep your agents productive and keep taking share that way, that, that feels more sustainable to me. So can you just talk about that piece a little bit? Thanks. Sure. Um, it's probably a combination of both technology and um, human, in, uh, human initiatives. So on the technology side, I think that the technology that we're building um, that allows agents more visibility into their businesses and just streamlines a lot of processes just saves up a lot of time, which, which kind of opens up the opportunity of serving more clients at the end of the day. So they can, they can handle more transactions in a given day or month versus before joining real. So, that's the technology piece of it. The, the human piece of it, um, we're taking a lot of action towards educating our agents, both on the listing side and on the buy side, um, just with kind of very tactical information on how to, to source leads, how to, how to generate and source leads, how to nurture leads, um, how to do weekly tasks, weekly emails, uh, deal of the week. Sharani is doing a lot of work around um, educating the agents on, on how to improve their productivity. And the last piece of it, I think that because of the very collaborative community that we built, there is so much happening on a daily basis, both online and offline, that successful agents are just um, educating newly licensed agents or agents that are now closing three transactions a year and want to take their business to the next level, which is six transactions a year. There's a lot of collaboration and uh, and sharing of information. And I think that this is extremely unique and that can help a lot of agents and can overall improve the per agent productivity within the company. Got it. Thanks for the thoughts. Thank you. Once again, for our analyst, if you have any questions or comments, please press star then one on your phone. Your next question is coming from Tom White from DA Davidson. Your line is live. Hey, this is Wyatt Swanson on for Tom. Thanks for taking our questions. Uh, it seems like you guys have had some really nice momentum with high productivity teams joining Real since the start of the year. Could you talk a bit about how the agent recruiting or agent attraction landscape may have changed for you guys in recent months? And then, you know, any specific parts of the overall Real brokerage value prop for agents that you're finding are really starting to resonate more with agents at the moment? Thanks. Hi, Wyatt. Um, so, yes, the momentum uh, has accelerated um, for us, and, uh, and I think that now this momentum is, is starting to translate into transactions. So our pipeline of open transactions um, is about 100, almost 100% higher than it was at the same uh, date last year. So this is translating into, into revenue. Um, I think that Maybe what fuels that is the fact that we are becoming a household name, for, first of all. I think it also has a human component, whereas some high-producing teams in different areas are joining us, and then a lot of other agents within the area are asking themselves, okay, why did that team join real? Maybe we should look into it. I think that the, the model itself is so sticky, and the fact that every agent that joins us um, is an opportunity to – to add another two, three, four, five other agents just because of the revenue share, it creates a snowball effect. And I think that we are now starting to, uh, um, to feel the, the effect of that snowball effect, um, which, is, which is great. When, uh, I, I think that some of the initiatives that really excite those agents and teams that are now joining us, uh, first of all, private label and pro teams um, are huge. Um, so just as a reminder, private label allows independent brokerages to switch over to real without changing anything in their branding, without investing in rebranding, without spending any money, just keeping their brand, their local brand that they built for so many years, which is extremely valuable for them, and joined on, join under our platform without changing the name or, or anything like that. Pro Teams 
is essentially um, a dashboard that allows team leaders and brokerage owners to configure a different plan for each and every agent within their team. So think about having 100 agents. One agent can, can be on a 70-30 split, another agent on a 50-50. Some agents pay a monthly fee. Some agents pay a closing fee. It's, a, it's a, um, an accounting nightmare for brokerages and teams. So Pro Teams just takes care of all of this in the background automatically for them. Those two initiatives makes the, um, the switch over to real seamless, extremely seamless, and it just eliminates a lot of the concerns that they have. So those two things obviously have a positive impact on growth. Uh, the, the other thing I would mention, there's a lot of excitement around the wallet. Just the ability to earn points in order to offset fees and uh, the ability to have a credit line attached to your business, which is something they cannot do right now uh, at their current bank. Um, this is something that they're excited about. And also, for example, for a team leader to be able to offer credit cards, branded credit cards to their team members, this is huge. This is something that nobody else offers. So they see the vision around this financial ecosystem that we're trying to build together with them. Got it. That's really helpful. I appreciate the color. And then just to follow up, uh, could you give any more detail or color just on overall agent growth expectations for the next few quarters or for calendar 2024 overall? Yeah, we're not providing a full year um, guidance, but as I said, a thousand agents join in January, a thousand in February, we're expecting over a thousand in March, probably another thousand in, in April. Uh, I don't know if, if that pace is sustainable or maybe it will even increase, but uh, at this point in time, it seems like uh, this is going to be a very, very strong growth year for us. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further questions from analysts in the queue. Great. Well, now that we've concluded the analyst portion of the call, we wanted to address some of the questions received from shareholders on the Say Technologies Q&A platform that was launched last week. We received a number of excellent questions, and so thank you to all who participated. Uh, first question uh, for Tamir, are the agent incentives, including the 85-15 split, sustainable? Um, yeah, the 85-15 commission split in favor of uh, our agents is core to our value proposition and something we have no plans to change, no plans to change in the future. Um, the split is one of the most generous in the industry, as you probably know, especially when factoring in the $12,000 cap. But it is also one of the reasons why we're focused on driving growth of our ancillary business lines, such as title and mortgage, as well as the re-wallet, where gross margin could be five to eight times higher than our traditional broker, brokerage margin. Great. Uh, next question for Sharon. What is the strategy to recruit and retain top agents, and how do you plan to retain top talent as the brokerage grows? Awesome. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, you know, for us, growth is not just about great numbers, right? It's about uh, attracting great people and then building a great community that actually create great numbers. So, so conceptually speaking, our approach is quite simple. We believe the top agent of today is actually looking for a completely different platform, and we call it an entrepreneur-centric platform. Now, what does that mean? Uh, agents today want to design and build and run their businesses the way they see fit in their market to their skills with their own business models and traditionally it's been where an agent has to plug into a brokerages model but we uh, have changed this approach where we say it's our job to create these entrepreneur centric lego blocks a lego block that an independent brokerage would would want is completely different than what a team would want is completely different than what a individual agent would want so uh, our focus is to build more of these Lego blocks to help agents build their businesses on the real platform, which gives us a true partnership with the agent. Got it. Uh, Tamir, next question. Have there been any concerns about Reels infrastructure with respect to the rapid growth we're experiencing? Uh, on the contrary, we're very excited about the growth. Uh, given the scalability of our tech platform, we're not concerned about the ability of our systems to handle the significant growth we're experiencing. Uh, in fact, just this week, 
Our transaction team set an all-time record by closing 500 transactions in a single day. This is something that we have never done before. Of course, we are making select, select headcount additions where necessary to ensure the, the agent onboarding and support teams remain well-equipped to support our agents whenever and uh, wherever they need. Um, but with that said, this is another reason why we're excited about Leo AI, uh, which effectively functions as a virtual assistant for every agent on our platform and reduces our need to hire the same amount of full-time employees as a traditional brokerage model would. Great. Next question for Sharon, and we talked about this a little bit in the analyst Q&A, but could you just expand on the vision for private label and how is this a unique value proposition for some agents? Uh, yeah, for sure. So uh, this goes to our entire company's philosophy of test and invest. And we've been working on this private label offering for you know about the last 12 months. In 2023, we ran a pilot of this program in five different markets. And that's what actually um, allowed us to say this, is, this could be adopted really well. So what private label really means, as Tamir talked about, is an independent brokerage that has built a brand in a local market can keep their brand while partnering with Real. This is important because in every other instance, these independent brokerages would have to give up their brands that they have built to actually join a company. So to give uh, for some broad context, there are over 100,000 independent brokerages in our country, and these independent brands and owners have spent years building brand equity in their local markets. In fact, uh, from personal experience in my previous brokerage, uh, tell us we, we built a leading brand in across 22 offices in Southern California that was acquired and combined with the national brokerage, and we lost that brand overnight. If we had this option, it would have been a much more scalable option for us. So with private label, independents can join Real, keep all their branding exactly the same, and effectively that creates, um, it, it makes Real a brokerage as a service provider, powering independent brokerages with our backend technology and systems and support. So I'm super excited about the potential of private label to offer this value to independent brokerages and teams uh, because it shows and goes to the scalability of our platform overall. So it, it's also worth mentioning that this is not done across the industry. There are a few players in our industry like uh, Side who have provided uh, somewhat of a similar offering to independent brokerages and their equity valuations are in the billions of dollars. So we actually feel pretty good about the potential for private label to help shine light on this tremendous value that we offer and the Lego blocks that we give to independent brokerages. Great. Next question for Michelle. When Real grants stock awards, where does the stock come from? Does the company go out in the open market to purchase the shares, or is there a float of treasury stock that the company is holding to issue the stock awards? Um, yes, yeah, so the answer is both. Um, we have the ability to issue stock as necessary in order to satisfy the various stock awards. However, we're also uh, active purchasers of our stock on the open market, um, and that enables us to issue shares from trust. So the buyback was you know, initially put in place to satisfy the agent awards, and so as long as we continue to buy back our stock, which we feel is undervalued, um, and a good use of our strong cash flow in order to offset dilution, then uh, we can you know, issue those, those shares from trust. Got it. Uh Samir, what is the strategy to increase the amount of mortgage providers participating in the One Real Mortgage platform? And are there any opportunities to automate the mortgage and, and title uh, processes? That's a combination of two questions. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously the, the rate environment has been volatile, but uh, we are actively recruiting more um, mortgage loan officers. So if anyone in the crowd is an MLO, please, and, and you're interested in joining uh, One Real Mortgage, please reach out to us uh, and apply. Um, regarding the efficiency of those two businesses, yes, I think that the same, uh, the, the same things we have done in the brokerage uh, business can be done for mortgage and title, and we are now working on it. So we think that those two businesses will not only grow revenue, but become more efficient in, in their operation. For example, we are building now a system which essentially we will replace a system called Qualia um, for, for Tidal, so kind of uh, powering the overall operation of Tidal ourselves instead of using a third-party system. And what we're building, I believe, is going to be superior. Uh, and we are going to own it, and we are one-wheel Tidal is going to be the only company that is using it. So there are a lot of opportunities to also 
uh, streamline title processes and mortgage processes uh, using technology, and we are working on it. Great. And last question for Tamir. Where do you see the stock market going for real in the next two to three years? Uh, well, obviously, we don't control the stock market or stock prices any, any more than we control the, the weather. But uh, we do know that over the long term, the stock price ultimately reflects the intrinsic value of the business. Uh, and so what that means for us, for real, is that as we continue to execute on our strategy rapidly, grow revenue and sustainably compound our earnings and free cash flow per share, um, our stock price will ultimately re reflect the significant value that we know we can and will create uh, for our shareholders. So we just need to continue and execute, build a great business, uh, work on, on growth and profitability, and I expect the stock price to react uh, accordingly. Great. Well, well, we'll end it there. If anyone has any additional questions on today's earnings release, please feel free to contact me directly. Matthew, would you please give the conference call replay instructions once again? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned, today's conference will be available for replay. The replay phone number is 877-481-4010, and the replay code is 49884. Once again, the replay phone number is 877-481-4010, and the replay code is 49884. You may disconnect your phone lines at this time and have a wonderful day. Thank you for your participation.